You can use protocol as any concrete type in Swift with one obvious constraint. You cannot initialize protocols directly. That means this kind of statement is invalid because protocol is not a concrete type, but a blueprint of how things should be. But what can we do is passing an object as a parameter that confirms a protocol. Let's see an example. Let's create a print name function and pass a player object. As you can see, this method works as always, but internally we only have access to player's properties and methods. This is great for encapsulation or in cases when a subdomain shouldn't see a bigger scope. So in any situation, then we only care about this particular type, which is a protocol. We don't care about that. We just use the protocol declaration and that's it. We don't care if person has more than more properties or methods than player. So this is great. What about collections? Let's create a class list of players and do operations only with a protocol type. We will create an array of players, an initializer with an array of players, a method to get who is the top player based on the score and who is the latest top players. Let's work on it. Let's add our player array here. And then let's create the initializer. Now let's add the variable latest top player, which will be an optional player. And finally, let's add get top player function that will return an uh, optional player. For get top player, I will sort my list by the highest score and get the first element in the list. I know this is not sounds like a good efficiency, but it's just for example. Then we will return nil if we have an empty list and we will save the latest top player at that moment. Let's use sorter here. And let's use a closure just to reflect what is the condition to sort. There you go. Now, in order to use our class, Let's create a concrete type for our protocol. Let's create a soccer player struct and add an initial property jersey number of type int. And let's add here jersey number of type int. Let's continue creating an array of players from different concrete types. I will use person and soccer player, since both confirm player protocol. So let's work. As you can see, soccer player requires an original jersey number, but our array doesn't care about it, since we only need an array of players. This is really cool. By the way, what would happen if we want to get a concrete type from the array? Well, you will have to force a cast, but be very careful since it will crash if your type doesn't match correctly.
Yeah, as you can see, we got the number 10, which is related to this element, but what will happen if we change this to zero? Yep, we got a crash. So be very careful. Forcing things in Swift is not always a good idea. So be extremely careful about it. Okay, finally, let's create our list of players object. And let's print the top player nickname. Additionally, you can iterate in a loop without any issue. Let's see that in action. Yeah, as you can see, this for loop is getting players and it's using only the properties from player, which is great. We got access to name and score. Yeah, you can use a protocol as a regular type. Is it possible to restrict a protocol to be only part of a class? Yeah, absolutely. And it's really simple. Let's see an example. Okay, yeah, we have our protocol here. And the only thing we have to do is just confirm another protocol here that is called any object. Basically, all classes in Swift should confirm to this protocol. So that means we only restrict the usage of classes in this particular protocol. Let's see that in an example. There you go, no problem at all. Let's see that now in a struct. Yeah, as you can see, compiler is telling here that this is not a class and we cannot use this protocol. So this is cool in situations when you want only a protocol to be only part of a class. What about if we want to confirm to many protocols at the same time? Is that possible? Yeah. Let's see an example. Yeah, as you can see, we're just conforming to many protocols at the same time. However, mm, okay, we have to, to separate this with commas, and it's cool, but if we had even more protocols, we'll have a long list here. Also, we can use extensions like we saw earlier to distribute this logic. However, there is one really cool action here to use, that is called protocol composition. It's really simple. One way to manage this is creating a type alias and let's see how we can create that composition. Okay, we have here our main protocols type alias and this is basically just copying this, which are all the requirements from this protocol and then use an ampersand symbol here. That's it. So now if we go back and use many protocols instead. Yeah, we are actually conforming these three guys at the same time. This is really convenient if you have more than three or four, whatever, many protocols at the same time and you want to confirm this, well, it's really cool. So use this technique in case you want to compose a lot of protocols in just one single line. If you have used Objective-C before, you will remember that protocols could be optionals in some situations. Well, by default, in Swift, all properties and methods in a protocol are required if you don't say anything. But there are two techniques to make a property and a method optional if it's required. Let me show you the first one that honestly, mm, I don't recommend so much. I mean, it's not bad, but Use it only if it's extremely required and if you need communication with Objective-C. The 
First one is decorating your protocol as an Objective-C protocol. Let's see that in action. Let's mark this protocol as Objective-C. Now we need to mark again our methods and properties that really require to be optional. Let's create one count variable and one print counter method. Okay, now the process is just to use again this decorator, Objective-C, and mark each of those as optional with a keyword optional. And now let's see an example. Yeah, as you can see, it's not requiring us anything of this, but let's see if we can use a pre counter for example. There we go, it's there. Now, another limitation here is that you can use only a Objective-C protocol as a class. If you want to use a struct here, you can't. So yeah, be careful about that. Also, before continuing with the other alternative, let's see this class counter in action. Let's create an object reflecting that and try to get count and print counter. Let's call print counter. Okay, it's working. What about count value? Remember, we are using my counter here, and in my counter, we don't have anything related about count. That's why compiler here is saying we don't have nothing about count. So, if you want to use this count value, you will have again to cast this as an Objective-C counter protocol. Let's see that. Since that this class is conforming Objective-C counter, we only need to use has without forcing a cast and use Objective-C well, Objective counter. Now let's use count. Oops, sorry. Now, as you can see, count is reflected as an optional int, but we don't have an optional here. By default, all your optional methods and properties will be marked to be a type optional. This is because, of course, you will have the possibility to not get in anything from here. So a compiler will autocomplete this as an optional type in Swift. So be also be careful about using this kind of optional properties and methods if it's required. Lastly, let's see a better approach. Well, well, I'm not saying that the previous one is bad, but it's more like an Objective-C approach. Let's see how Swift is actually handling this in a Swift way. Let's create again another protocol. Okay, we have our protocol here, counter with the same information that before, count and print counter. And now let's create an extension of this protocol. And let's call print counter. Yeah, let's see this magic. You can actually implement right away your counter protocol directly in this extension. So let's put something here. That's right. You can implement your protocols by using an extension right away. And then all types that will confirm your protocol won't require to complete this print counter because you already have something here. You will have a default implementation here. This is extremely useful. I use this many times. Well, not many times because I don't like to use so much the optionals protocols because, well, by default, you should use your protocols as a requirement of contracts for your types, but it's a really nice way and convenient way to get default elements in your protocol. Let's try that in a struct now. Let's wait for the error and let's fix it. There you go. The only requirement now is count and print counter is 
is there, but we have a default implementation already. Let's try that. Yeah, as you can see, we just called print counter and we got the default message. But if we implement this in our struct and run this again, we now got the actual custom implementation that we put here. This is really cool. So this is an overview about protocols and all the things you can do. Well, what I mean all the things is that all the basic things because in the next video, we will see something really cool about generics. And also you can include generics into your protocols. Yeah. And also create a generic protocol with associated types that we already saw in many videos in this channel. That's it for this video. As you can see, protocols are really important in Swift language, but also are a core piece in SwiftUI because basically all we use are protocols. So it's really important to you to study more about that because they are everywhere. Also, what do you think about protocols? Do you think this video was useful for you to understand it? Let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like because that helped me a lot to reach more people like you and grow, grow up this community. That's it for now. Thank you so much and have a great day.